Well, we have another mouse to review. So let's take a look at it. And that's what we're gonna do today. We are going to talk about the Razer Basilisk uh, uh, Ultimate Wireless Gaming Mouse. It is an interesting mouse. Um, first off, I'm gonna start off with pricing. Um, Razer sells it for $149.99. Amazon, you can get it for $149.99. Uh, for some reason on uh, Newegg, they feel the need to have it at $248. I'm assuming that's a marketplace seller. And I'm not sure who on God's earth would pay $248 for this mouse. Um, I wouldn't. But that's where they currently have it. If you buy it with the dock, which is, you know, it's nice. It's clean. It's, uh, it's simple. It's, it gives you a spot to charge it real quick which you will need, um, unless you're just gonna leave it with the wired option, which would then defeat the entire purpose of this mouth. You can get this thing for, I believe it is, yeah, $169.99 with the, um, the dock. I don't know what to say about that. I just think that you're getting into some unrealistic territory here, especially for what the mouse is. But anyway, we're gonna get into um, the rest of that in a moment. Just going over some of the features here that they advertise it with. It's got the hyper speed wireless, which uh, frankly, all of the good mice right now, mouses, mice, I call them mice. Um, they're also fast. I personally can't tell the difference. I mean, I've got a Logitech G502 light speed. It's awesome. Uh, a Corsair Iron Claw wireless. It's awesome. It works great. Uh, Rocket Leader. Awesome. It works great. I mean, I don't see any latency in any of these items. So. While I understand that that is somewhat of a um, feature for advertising, I don't know that I would go, oh my gosh, this is the best thing out there just because of that. It does have 11 programmable buttons. Uh, it's pretty well mapped out. You can see how it works uh, when you look at it right here. Uh, it's got the chroma uh, RGB lighting effects. Everything's RGB now. I mean, at least it looks clean, especially if you use it with other Razer peripherals, which I actually am on this one. Uh, and I'll show you that in a little bit here too. One thing that I do think is very neat and stands out about this is at the bottom, it's got a wheel that you can adjust either up or down for the resistance of the scroll wheel. Now I have it so how I like it. But you can have this thing so basically just you flip it and it flies, you can have it so it has so much resistance it barely uh, moves at all. I think that's a very neat feature. Something that does make this stand out a little bit. You're gonna come down through here. They claim it's got 100 hours of battery life. Now, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, that may be if you don't use any of the RGB lighting at all. The minute you have that lighting on, and depending upon where you set it, and I'm gonna show you that as well in here, uh, it's going to you know, lengthen or lessen the amount of battery life. If you have the brightness turned all, all the way, it gives you about six hours of battery life. It is very disappointing, just to be honest. The uh, Logitech, as well as the Iron Claw and the Leader from a Rocket, all have substantially better battery life uh, with the RGB lights on. Now, again, I get it. This has got a lot of zones to it, but I think that uh, they could have done way better with the battery on this. With that said, it does at least look really nice when tied in with everything. It does have five onboard memory profiles. That's nice uh, to have that that you can fly between at any given point. It advertises the 100% PTFE mouse feet. So it's smooth. I mean, I'll tell you that. I, I can't say it's smoother or not than say the Logitech or the other two wireless skimming mice I use. They all feel about the same to me. The one thing I do know about this is it is a little lighter than the mice I prefer. Um, but that's again, personal preference. Okay, when you get down into the specs, uh, they do advertise this as having 107 grams of weight in it. Okay, sure. I mean, it's it's okay. It's a little lighter than the mice I like. The uh, I, I like with the Logitech that you can add weights to it. I like with the, the uh, leader that it's already a little heavier. Uh, it's again, a little bit more my style and I'll explain that later. Uh, and that this does have a true 20,000 DPI optical sensor. I will say it is very responsive. It seems very smooth. I don't have any issues with uh, anything at all. I don't set my sensors or the, the, the optical sensor 
all the way up. I usually keep it like the 1800 to 2200 DPI range. It's just my preference and that's where I keep it. It does have what they're saying is the Razer optical mouse switches rated for 70 million clicks. I don't know that I'll ever get to test that to find out, but sounds great to me. Let's uh, dive into the uh, Razer Synapse software. And that's how you run this thing is with Razer Synapse 3. Okay, jumping into Razer Synapse 3. One thing I will point out that I really like is this does tie in very nicely with the additional Razer peripherals that you may or may not have. Now, I actually have another one that's not showing up on here. Uh, I happen to have what's called the uh, Razer Or Weaver Chroma. I wish it would just simply show up in the one so I didn't have to have Razer Synapse 2 and Razer Synapse 3 running. But whatever, um, is what it is, I guess. Still, it does let you really customize things so that they all tie together. Right now, it's pretty simple. Uh, you go into your, your mouse here, right? And we're just gonna look at the lighting first because you know that's the first thing I think everybody's gonna customize, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. You go into your Chrome effects and it's so simple to, to uh, change what you wanna do with your mouse. So right now I have them all tied together. As you can see, I just went like this and I went into wave and I changed my properties. So uh, it, you click on the color that you wanna use and it gives you the patterns that you wanna switch between, which you know is easy and great and all that fun stuff. You can um, change your speed, the whole bit. You can do a lot with the lighting in here. now. Again, this is a side thing. Some people are really gonna be excited about it. I think it looks nice. It ties together with my theme. Uh, my build being Genesis is a um, purple and um, like a light blue, or I don't wanna call it teal, but a light blue uh, lighting scheme. And so that's kind of what I've done with the lighting in my office and the lighting on my keyboard and all that stuff. So that kind of all ties together and I like that. Let's go to customizing, or let's look at the performance first. So you have your tabs here, right? Where you can decide how you want to set up a profile. So you can, uh, I, you know, I play a couple games in here, right? So I can go in here and I can decide, okay, where do I want for my profile to be? And you can save them and you can save them as onboard as well right here, which is really nice. And then you've got, it tells you how you've got these all saved. So let's say I want to change a function just to do something here. Let's say I want to, okay, so we're gonna change something here. Let's say I want to change my sensitivity clutch, which this is interesting because this, right off the bat, comes with this removable clutch button, if you will, that is replaceable should it break. So that is pretty neat. Scares me though in some senses because are they telling me that it's going to break? I guess I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, it's held in there magnetically, which I like that. So let's say I want to change my sensitivity clutch. I can go here and I can have this set to whatever I want it to be. Let's say I want it to be a keyboard function and I want it to just simply be a number pad and I want it to be number one. It's that simple for me to do. Now, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna save it that way, but um, programming this mouse compared to others in their software is really nice. It's very simple, it's very clean. I like that. So let's go away from the customized portion here. You can set your DPI, and this is going to be in the buttons that are going to be right on the top. You can change your DPI function up and down, just depending upon uh, where you have these set. And to change those, because you know, let's say I, for some reason, this thinks I want to have a, uh, a DPI of twenty thousand here, right? So we're going to change that to holy criminy! Yikes! I don't even know if I can slow it down. Enough. There we go. We're going to change that to uh, thirty four hundred. Because that's something I might actually use, actually. So stage five wouldn't make a sense. So we're gonna put that to, I don't know, I guess, let's change my customization right now. 9,000, we're gonna put this one to 6,000. We're gonna put this one to 2,200. Because that's something I'm actually more likely to use. Um, something around those lines, right? And you can change these stages by simply coming through and now they're saved to this, and I think that is real slick. Now you can also program this to be something else, and you can come in here and change it if you want. The other thing that's really nice is on the bottom, you can cycle through your profiles by pressing this button. This will cycle you up and down. So now I'm in crosshair six, now I'm in follow in order, 
And now I'm back to a quick start for this one, which, you know, I should probably rename this to something. So we're gonna re rename this as Genesis. There we go. So that'll be my, that'll be my program for here. All right. And what's nice is this also affects the lighting. So I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna say, I want this to be um, fall in order. If I had a lighting profile set to it, it would change that as well. So I'm gonna leave this on what I've got right now because you know I don't need to do anything else. Lighting, we kind of talked about, not a big deal. Your polling rate is set in here. I'm gonna leave it at the, uh, the thousand because I don't know why you would want your polling rate at 125. Um, seems a little strange. Uh, you can tie into your mouse uh, windows properties if you needed to within here. Again, you got your lighting. Now I wanted to touch on this. This brightness wheel is important. You can crank this thing up. And if you have this up at 100%, I mean, it is bright. It looks awesome. I'm not sure how well you can see that. I'll get a close up of this in a little while here. But it gets really bright. But, or you can get have it really dim and shut it off. This is what's going to affect um, your battery life. I have found that with it around this, I can get about eight to 10 hours of continual use out of this mouse. Um, and it will at least get me through a day if you will, if, if I'm using it for work or if I'm using it for gaming. I mean, eight hour gaming session for me, that's a long time. I don't know that I can do that anymore. <laughs> Wish I could. I don't really have a chance. We should try to fix that. Um, but, and you can switch off your lighting right here. When idle, you can say, hey, look, after being idle for, you know, and this will really save your battery life. If you went after being idle for five minutes, I wanna have the light shut off. Or after being 15 minutes or whatever the case is, I'm just gonna set it to the maximum because why not, right? But this is where you can affect your uh, battery life on your mouse itself, just with the lighting. Uh, again, if you have it cranked up and uh, you don't have the lighting, Switching off after being idle, I mean, the battery life is pretty horrendous. Probably the worst ones out of the uh, four while it's gaming mice that I use right now that have um, RGB backlighting in them. So you got your calibration area here, uh, not too big of a deal. And then you've got your wireless power setting. So you want to enter sleep mode after a period of time. Again, these things will affect your battery life. Very important that you get uh, used to using these. Now I'm not gonna go through and do a full tutorial on how to use um, the synapse, but I wanted to show you how this actually functions with this. Now, let's get to some more practical uh, matter here. Ooh, right about that. Okay, let's get to a more practical thing here. How does the mouse feel? Well, at 107 grams, it's not bad. I have bigger hands, or wider, I should say. So for me, this is about as thin of a mouse as I'd like to go. I typically use a mouse that's wider. I like my hands to be a little bit more spread out. That's just my preference, as well as um, the weight of the mouse. I prefer also a heavier mouse. Personal preference. I'm not getting into statements of whether you know that's good or bad or whatever else. So for use, it's nice. The the it feels clicky. One thing I really like about this that I wish uh, some others would uh, do a better job as is the clicks are very defined. They don't feel they don't feel spongy. They don't feel like they're going to give out on you. They're just nice solid clicks. The the mouse wheel it is in how I have it right now that that sensitivity portion or the the adjustment piece on the bottom here is so nice. That is so important that you can go in. And set that I like it is a defined, clicky, more resistance in, in the mouse well because of how they use it. Now, off of that, the thing I really like about this mouse is with this one, you can actually program the scroll up and scroll down. I wish everybody did that. Not everybody does. Rocket does. Uh, Corsair, I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look. I believe they do. Logitech doesn't allow me to program that scroll wheel like this one does. So on my scroll up and scroll down, I can set these to different features within the game because I don't always want those defaulted. I really like that. This, you know, for use and, and programmability and everything is really, really nice. So I can't say anything negative with regards to that. However, at $170 for the way people are gonna buy it, I just, 
I can't go out and say you should buy this mouse. I have a hard time saying for people to go out and spend $150 on this or the Logitech G502 uh, Lightspeed Wireless because it's $150. The mouse I use for my gaming is $126. That is my rocket leader. I love that mouse. Um, it's mostly their support sucks. Just the forewarning rocket support is horrendous. But how the mouse functions and how the software works for that mouse is very nice. Uh, they have some improvements they could use as well. But anyway, I got this on sale during, oh, I don't remember what it was here, a couple of months ago. So I got a 50% off code. Now that was a good buy. At 80 bucks, $85, this was a heck of a, a good mouse purchase at that point that I would say, if you could get this thing for 130, 140 bucks with the dock, I would say go for it. I just think things are getting really expensive. Again, that's my opinion. I am not a big fan of overpriced peripherals uh, and they seem to be going more that way and people are still paying for them. I don't know why, as I'm sitting here with my uh, Nomos Pro. But anyway, um, my Nomos Pro speakers, which, by the way, these speakers are awesome. If you can get those on a deal, you should get those. Total sidebar there, though. I apologize. I'm having one of those morning. I haven't had enough coffee yet. Some of you might think I've had too much, but I haven't had enough. That's the reality. So in the end, this is a nice mouse. I like it for what it is. I just wish that it was a little heavier, a little lighter, and not as much money. Those are my biggest complaints, if you will. If it, And I don't want to say that those are negative. Personal preference. I prefer a larger mouse. You might like this because this is this will fit most hands very nicely. Uh, about a month, month and a half ago, I had talked about finally doing a build with a motherboard I was really excited to get, which was my X570 AORS Extreme uh, motherboard and doing that with the 3950X processor. My next video here, I'm going to start doing that. I'm hoping you've hit subscribe and mark those notifications so that when that comes out, you'll know. Hopefully you liked today's video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button for me. If you didn't, you know what else to do. Hopefully it's not that. Hit that subscribe button for me as it does help this channel to grow and we will see you in the next one.